Item number SCP-3069 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Mobile Task Force Gamma-6 Deep Feeders are partnered with the staff of Offshore Provisional and Research Site-3069 and Coastal North Carolina Site-42 for the purposes of monitoring SCP-3069 activity. As deep-level research and exploratory efforts have been stalled indefinitely following the events of Exploration Log 2A, no excursions lower than pre-explored depths into SCP-3069 are to be allowed without permission from at least two acting O5 Council members, the Site Director of Site-42 and the Site Director of Site-3069. Following the full activation of SCP-3069 and confirmation of SCP-3069 undergoing an ANOVA Exonera event, the following additional containment procedures should be enacted in the order of their respective stages. Stage 1 denotes the time following initial activation of SCP-3069, estimated to have already occurred. During this time, the governments of all United Nations countries will be informed by a joint scientific branch of both the SCP Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition that a research team with NOAA has discovered a recent increase in sulfur-based manufacturing waste toxins throughout the North Atlantic. World governments will be encouraged to increase oceanic exploration and water quality research for the purposes of safety and gaining additional data. However, SCP-3069 itself must not be directly mentioned at any point, and if it is found that any exploratory advances by non-Foundation or GOC parties have led to unauthorized discovery of SCP-3069, those involved should be detained, interrogated, amnesticized, and released if the situation permits. Stage 2 denotes the time ranging from the end of Stage 1 to the point at which SCP-3069 undergoes an ANOVA Exonera event. During Stage 2, news sources and unauthorized research publications by scientific organizations, both private and federal, must be monitored for unapproved information releases regarding abnormal and rapid changes in marine life and chemical composition of North Atlantic water. If a source is found to have fully discovered the existence and or suspected function of SCP-3069, the creators of the information are to be located, detained, interrogated, and amnesticized. In the event that a source successfully publishes information about SCP-3069, a unique cover story is to be developed for each publication in question, and the creators of the publication dismissed as fraudulent. Stage 3 denotes the time period taking place after the point at which SCP-3069 undergoes an ANOVA Exonera event. During this time, SCP-3069 will have begun to release all materials and specimens held within it. The following must then occur. Note, the following procedures are for the U.S. version of this document only. Foundation sites located in UN countries other than the United States are equipped with their own respective versions of the following procedures. 1. SCP-2000 will be prepared for activation, with usage estimated to begin two to five years after the onset of Stage 3. A full list of personnel slotted for use in SCP-2000 is restricted to O5 access only, and is not available in this document. 2. Foundation emergency responders will partner with the CDC for the purposes of containing leakages of chemical hazards released by SCP-3069 or materials and entities released by SCP-3069. 3. News sources will at this point be allowed to publish information about SCP-3069, as most media coverage will most likely be speculative and inaccurate. However, News sources and research organizations must still be monitored as closely as personnel availability and Foundation involvement allows, and researchers not affiliated with the Foundation, Global Occult Coalition, or NOAA who publish unique or previously undiscovered information about SCP-3069 should be detained and interrogated. 4. An international ban on both private and commercial cross-Atlantic travel will be issued by the United Nations. The import of foreign products will either be carried out by air travel or halted completely. 5. With the assistance of the U.S. National Guard and U.S. Coast Guard, 
all Eastern American coastal towns will be fully evacuated and abandoned. 6. Over the next several years, as much of the population as is possible will be moved further inland. By this point, the nature of SCP-3069 will have already become public due to the damaged state of coastal areas. Information suppression efforts should then be directed towards public education and safety training. However, directly informing the public of SCP-3069's origin and purpose will at no point be necessary, and should be avoided. 7. Approximately ten years after the full completion of an Innova Exonera event, as much as 60% of North American population will be dead or diseased. Recovery efforts by the Foundation Global Occult Coalition and CDC should be directed to suppressing, quarantining, or terminating affected animals and cordoning off high-risk areas. 8. All Foundation sites will enter XK-Class Standard Preparatory Mode, and will remain in this state as long as possible for each individual site. Sites are permitted to develop their own scientific containment procedures for this period, and should attach these to copies of this document when necessary. At this point, no excursions past any site boundaries are recommended nor permitted by the O5 Council. After this point, no deployed Foundation employees are to be permitted re-entry to their respective sites, and should be informed of this beforehand to avoid confusion. 9. SCP-2000 will be fully activated, and will be in use for an estimated 250 to 500 years. 10. Following the aforementioned activation of SCP-2000, Foundation personnel will no longer be required to monitor or protect the populace, and these efforts will then be left to the management of federal and state governments. SCP-3069 is a designation for a massive physical construct extending approximately 6,000 kilometers across the North Atlantic Ocean. At the time of this writing, SCP-3069 continually releases specimens and substances of unknown origin, the purposes of which appear to be referred to as an Innova Exonera event. This development is recent, and was most likely triggered by a notable event taking place in June 2020, when TAP-14, the last functioning transatlantic telecommunications cable, suffered a massive failure within the vicinity of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Upon investigation by the Sprint Network Administration System, it was discovered that a section of a massive metallic structure had breached through a gap in the divergent boundary of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge near TAP-14 and severed it at three separate points over a 950km section. SCP-3069's anomalous nature was then discovered when an NOAA exploration team investigated the original breach point now designated Access Point 1, of SCP-3069 and TAP-14. When their unmanned submarine approached the area, it was revealed that a number of unknown organisms had already been released into surrounding seawater see Figure A, presumably directly after SCP-3069 collided with TAP-14. SCP-3069 has three known access points all of which are also the original interception points of SCP-3069 and TAP-14. Due to SCP-3069's size, it is considered likely that SCP-3069 has an unknown number of additional access points which cannot be located. Access Point 1 is a large sealed pipe with a diameter of 25 meters, located at, at a depth of approximately 3,500 meters. Access Point 1 allows entry through a series of external wiring ports on its underside. After several unsuccessful tests, it was discovered that a light electrical current 120 volts, applied to two of the three visible ports prompted response from a 5 x 5 meter square hatch on the inside wall of Access Point 1. This hatch opened, allowing MTF Gamma-6 personnel access to a section of the interior of SCP-3069. Access Point 2 is identical in form and function to Access Point 1, and is located at, at a depth of approximately 3,200 meters. However, Access Point 2 appears to have suffered an internal structure failure at some point, 
and opening its hatch yields a blockage of an unknown but non-toxic sponge-like object. Drilling through this blockage has been considered, but not yet attempted due to its size and density. Access Point 3 is an invisible cylindrical spatial distortion located at 43 degrees 36 minutes 58.9 seconds north, 21 degrees 27 minutes 35.6 seconds west, at a depth of approximately 4,000 meters, the size of which is estimated at a diameter of 150 meters and a height of 400 meters. Access Point 3's anomalous nature appears to be caused by the installation of a movable electromagnetic device, SCP-3069-A. SCP-3069-A is a 2-meter steel pole topped with a phosphorescent sphere, composed of an unknown material. SCP-3069-A constantly emits a faint green light, a magnetic flux field of 23.4 to 32.0 tesla and low levels of gamma radiation. In 2021, Offshore Provisional and Research Site 3069 was established around Access Point 3 for the purposes of preventing entry into SCP-3069 by marine lifeforms, preventing exit from SCP-3069 by unknown lifeforms and substances, and establishing a point of research for SCP-3069 as a whole. On March 6, 21, Five months after the initial discovery of SCP-3069, the first excursion into SCP-3069's interior was made through Access Point 1. Three members of Mobile Task Force Gamma-6, Agents Jones, Garcia, and Lockwood, volunteered for field research and were instructed to enter through Access Point 1's hatch and ascertain the following information about SCP-3069 if possible. The Origin of the Anomaly the purpose of the anomaly if applicable. Any hazards present in the anomaly. How much of the anomaly is traversable, despite its massive size. Whether the anomaly is one structure or multiple similar structures. Whether the anomaly contains life. All three agents were equipped with Class VI hazardous exposure suits, in addition to Foundation standard high-pressure scuba gear rated to a resistance capacity of 39,500 kPa. Agents Lockwood and Garcia were each equipped with waterproof digital cameras and instructed to remain in the lead of the group, photographing any abnormalities, entities, or devices found on board SCP-3069. Agent Jones was equipped with one miniature head-mounted video camera for the purposes of later analysis and instructed to remain behind Agents Lockwood and Garcia at all times. Agent Jones was equipped with standard two-way radio equipment for the purposes of communicating with observation personnel. All three agents were equipped with full-body locking restraint harnesses attached to a cord rappelling system the pulley equipment of which was located on MTF Gamma-6's R-24 mobile reconnaissance vehicle for the purposes of pulling all three agents back to the exterior of the access point in the event of an emergency. Begin Log March 6, 2021 2-23-10 This is Jones. Checking comms. We read your comms check, Jones. Confirm status of team members. Lockwood and Garcia are good to go. Affirmative. Proceed away from the exterior of the vehicle and toward access point 1. Affirmative. We'll contact when the hatch is entered. 25 second radio silence as the team swims from the DSRV to access point 1's hatch. Arrival. Lockwood and Garcia proceeding to access point. Copy. 17 second radio silence as the team proceeds through the hatch and into SCP 3069's interior. Describe your surroundings, and do not close the hatch. I repeat, do not close the hatch. Hell no, I'm not closing the hatch. Affirmative. What are your surroundings? Dark. Lockwood, Garcia, let's turn our headlamps on. Alright, base. We've got a flooded hallway-type structure here, dilapidated, with some sort of green algae growth on equipment. Photograph and document the equipment. Affirmative. 15 second radio silence. Done. Route ahead looks to be more of the same. Water is cloudy. Headlamp beams are penetrating no more than 15 meters out. Route is rectangular like a hallway. 
and significantly smaller in width than the entry point. How wide is this area? No more than 10 meters. Team, keep to the right side wall. Please confirm status. Slow moving in here because of the water. We're sticking to the right side wall. Later analyst, I'm holding up one finger in front of the head mounted video camera right now. Reference this to align editing times. Appreciated, Agent. Can you describe the physical environment further? Lockwood says she found some writing. Stand by while I proceed. Affirmative. Lockwood and Garcia are photographing the writing. It's not handwriting. It's printed, engraved, like a placard. It looks like some sort of warning sign. Can you interpret it? Negative. It's not in any language I've seen. We'll get the linguist on it. Please proceed in whichever direction you choose. Garcia says he's found another hatch. It's at the end of this hallway, and appears to be the only means of continuing forward. Opening another hatch could cause significant water pressure differences, which could potentially induce physical symptoms. Make sure all team members recognize this before proceeding. Understood. Garcia Lockwood. I'm told we might get the bends if we open that, and there's a pressure differentiation. Are you still alright with proceeding? 7 second radio silence. Copy base, they're alright with it. If we go silent for longer than 5 minutes, pull us in. Affirmative, please use caution. We can always send D-classes in. Acknowledged. But we might as well proceed. I don't think the site's gotten many yet since it was built. Lockwood, try to turn that hatch open. Report on what is behind the hatch immediately after opening it. Will do. Garcia, help her turn the wheel to the right. 9 second radio silence. Base, this thing isn't budging. Turn it the other way. Lockwood, try turning it clockwise. 10 second radio silence. Affirmative base, that appears to be working. The hatch doesn't open in the standard direction. Garcia, Lockwood, stand clear of the hatch as it opens, in case of a difference in pressure. Don't want us getting sucked into something. How wide is this hatch? Hatch is probably two meters across. Access wheel is half a meter, circular. Copy that. Lockwood says the hatch is now loose. She says that it feels like it's going to push open if she lets go of it, indicating that the pressure on that side may be significantly higher than that on this side. If all team members are aware of this, proceed. 10 second radio silence. Hatch is open. There's some shit in this water. Dead fish and shit. Ugh. Do you recognize the species? They're too torn up. The water's half composed of blood and a green, slimy substance. God, I'm glad I can't smell right now. Acknowledge. Proceed through the hatch. Ten second radio silence. Alright. Garcia Lockwood, go through. I'm right behind you. Keep your lights on and describe any changes in surroundings. Alright, I'm- God damn it, these fish bits need to get out of my fucking face. Give me a minute to let the gunk settle before I see out of my visor. Thirty minutes remaining on air supply. Yeah, yeah, I know. Twenty second radio silence. Okay, here we go. Alright, this area's different. We've got what looks like some thick, transparent glass or plastic material. It's looking out over the sea floor, and there are two massive spotlights illuminating everything. I'm getting this on video, and Lockwood and Garcia are photographing another foreign language placard they found. But the glass is fogged up. I can't see too well through it, because it's deteriorated. But there's a really big view out there. 10 second radio silence. Agent, I am told that this environment does not match up with geographical mapping of this area. If the direction in which you have proceeded is accurate, you should at this point be underneath the sea floor. How far above the sea floor do you appear to be? At least a hundred meters. It's hard to tell proportion from here, but this would be like standing on top of a small building and looking at the ground. The bottom is transparent too. I can look under my feet and see out into the surrounding water. If I move my foot to push the piles of fish guts out of the way. It's dark. But it looks like this thing has some artificial lamps lighting the sea for a little bit. I see some fish moving away below us in the sand. Noted. Proceed further down the route and try to locate the source of the biological matter. Affirmative. We're proceeding. 23 second radio silence as the team proceeds further away from the access point. Something isn't right. Describe immediately. 
We're several more meters down, and we pass through a smaller hatch. There's a setup here. Some sort of elevator? No, it's not an elevator, it's a platform. There are buttons by it, no switches, with placards beside them. This is some sort of directory. Lockwood and Garcia are taking photographs as we speak. Thirteen second radio silence. Hang on, fuck. What's wrong? I found out what's causing the fish bits. There's some sort of intake vent right here. Something with spinning blades. On our side, there's a thin mesh grate, but behind it is the body of a whale. At least I think it's a whale. I can't tell because it's so torn up. I'm videoing it. And the whale's viscera is leaking through the grate? Affirmative. God, this is nasty. You are free to proceed to a different area provided you are done photographing. Try to proceed further into the structure. You are free to proceed to a different area provided you are done photographing. Try to proceed further into the structure. We're not seeing much. My flashlight beam can reach all the walls, and there are no further access points or hatches visible. If we move forward, it's going to have to be with this elevator thing, provided the thing even works. That is ill-advised. There is no telling what a transportation device of unknown function will do to human physiology. If you decide to proceed, do not go alone, and keep in mind that it could have adverse effects on your body. Alright, noted. We'll keep looking around. Can you move the whale carcass and access the vent? I guess, it's a baby whale, but I don't exactly want to touch it. You're wearing full hazmat equipment and a scuba suit. Get one of the other agents to do it then. Fine, fine. Garcia, help me get in here and move this damn thing. 34 second radio silence. What is your status? We're just about to… Fuck, there. We've got the grate off and the whole carcass went flying into the room. Jesus, the room's half blood now. Can our rebreathers filter out this much shit? Yes, they can. The filters catch it, but try to slow your breathing a little. They're having to work harder to extract oxygen. Alright, we can do that. How much time do we have? Twenty-three minutes. Explore this upcoming area, and then retreat back to the vehicle for safety. Much appreciated. Eighteen-second radio silence. What is your status? This area isn't safe. There's a massive rushing current flowing from our right to our left. If we step out into it, it's not going to go well. We're not asking you to step into it. Photograph the area and surroundings. Affirmative. Distance across is large, probably twenty meters. We seem to have doubled back on ourselves, but the layout doesn't match up. Can you elaborate on that? We made a U-turn from the observation hallway with the glass, which logically means that area would be to our right by a few meters at this point. But it's not. This is just an empty tunnel with a current flowing through it. Alright, this is looking like an extra-dimensional anomaly then. Explains the massive size of the thing. We'll make note of it. Don't lose sight or connection with your retrieval cord. We won't. Lockwood, brace yourself on the edge here and hold my hand while you lean out and take a picture. Can you do that? Be careful leaning out into any moving water. The difference in force could lead to injuries. She's being careful. Alright, please retreat immediately after this. Lockwood's going to hang onto these pipes and crawl about five meters down along the side. She says she sees another placard with language and information. That is not advised. Please use extreme caution. Acknowledge. She's leaning out now. Fifteen second radio silence. How far down is she? She's almost… hang on. Shit. Is there an emergency? Please respond. Fuck, fuck. She just slipped. The, the fucking pipe snapped and fell off. Lockwood, wrap your hand around the retrieval cord and hang on, while Garcia and I pull you up. Do not hold on to anything that does not look solid. We know, we know. Fuck, fuck, she's… No, no, you don't have to do that. Just try to grab the wall. We can brace you. Fuck, base, we're all slipping. Lockwood, no, don't. We can pull you up. Just stop moving. No, no, oh my… fuck, fuck. What is your status? Lockwood cut the fucking cord. We were all falling and she just… she saw that we were all slipping and she reached up with her knife and cut herself off. Christ. Understood. Can you see her? Eight second radio silence. She's gone. She's so far down the stream that I can't even see where it ends. 
It's too dark to see past several meters anyway. I swear, I can hear… Do you know how far sound would travel in water like this? Through these suits? I swear I can hear her. Fucking hell. It is highly unlikely that you would be able to hear her at this point. The distance would be too great. Return immediately to the vehicle. Alright, come on, Garcia. Report any abnormalities you notice on your way back. Yes. 17 second radio silence. The… the whale's gone. The whale is gone? Are you saying the carcass is out of sight? The whale carcass is gone from this room it had ended up in after we cleared the vent. The water is clear again, too. What has changed in the surroundings? 20 second radio silence. I, I don't want to talk too loudly. There's something… off… about the wall by the elevator device. Why are you whispering? Is there an entity present? Yes, by the wall. If you are unsafe to speak, remain silent and exit the structure. If you feel comfortable speaking, describe its physical appearance and photograph it if possible. I can't. It's not visible. You said it was by the wall. I know. I know it's there. That's where the lighting changed. It turned something on over there. It's messing with the device with all the switches. I don't think it's looking at me yet. Please describe it. If you do not see anything, it could be possible that this is a paranoia response following trauma. This isn't a hallucination. There is something here, and it just cleaned up the whale gunk, and now it's fixing the elevator. How do you know? I'm watching it. It's a clear patch of water. It's a slight difference in the light. It's flipping switches. I'm watching them move. Are you saying this entity is invisible, but affected by water and light? No. I'm saying this is incorporeal. I can't actually tell if it's there or not. It hasn't talked to me yet. Garcia says the same thing. What do you want us to do? If it hasn't noticed you yet and it's not observable to photograph, exit the way you came. Okay, alright. I don't think it can hear. I'm talking at normal volume now and it hasn't noticed us. Stay silent and report when you exit the room. This should take no longer than 60 seconds. 25 second radio delay. Fuck fuck no, just no. Every time I move, I feel it noticing me. I think it can feel the water. The movement in the water. It's going to look at us and… Stop us. Are you saying this entity has hostile intentions? Do not feel compelled to answer or speaking is unsafe. No, no, it definitely can't hear. Either that or the suit and water is blocking any sound it would hear anyway. But it's moving. How do you know it's moving? I feel it… it's a hot spot. On my head, as a headache. I'm watching it shift to the other side of the room. It's a fuzzy spot in my vision, like I'm looking at a bright light. The spot moves just like my headache does. The headache… it's on my left temple now. It's moving to the left side of the room to stop us from exiting. If you feel it necessary, move faster to exit the hatch. When you exit, tell us and we will immediately reel in the line. It wouldn't chase us. How do you know this? Please make an effort to remember what you are feeling right now, for the purposes of later interview and analysis. It's fuck fuck my head. Is Garcia safe? He's right here. Look, I don't want to go past this thing. If I went for the hatch now, I'd be walking through it. The thought of doing that is… I have a very strong feeling that I shouldn't. If it is non-corporeal, you are most likely safe to walk through it, even if you perceive that it is occupying a physical space. No, 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 fuck no. This is different. This thing is here. I see it as little shapes swimming around my vision. It's trying to get into my head. Do you have cognito hazard resistance training? No, I'm a fucking scuba diver, not a memeticist. We don't deal with shit like this, you know that. If you are ill-equipped to block out emotional interference from an anomalous entity, I would still advise both of you to simply proceed through the area as fast as possible. You are running out of air. I can't do this. Garcia can't either. He looks like he's going to pass out. I would rather run out of air than… And it's staring at me. It's staring right at me. It's staring through me. It just made this noise. This ringing noise in my head. It's making my vision go blue and my ears bleed. I think it wants me. If you are unsafe, there is no… 
Distortion, scraping, and unintelligible vocalizations are heard. 23 second radio silence. No, no, no. Report on your status. It got in me. It got… it… You have less than 10 minutes of air supply left. If you are unaffected, you need to exit immediately. Where is Garcia? 20 second radio silence. Safe. Okay, if you are both safe, then exit immediately. Where is the entity? Un… present. The entity is no longer present? Unintelligible interference. The entity is no longer present. Return to the vehicle. The vehicle. I am coming. Affirmative. 47 second radio silence. Upon retrieval, Agent Jones did not respond to questioning, nor does he allow the vehicle crew to reel in the safety line for a faster exit. Following their return, Agent Jones and Garcia are moved to Site-3069 for questioning and medical treatment respectively. Afterward, due to events outlined in the above log, Agent Jones was detained on-site in Site-3069 Medical Wing for the purposes of determining his mental state and any manners in which the undefined anomaly affected him. However, as Agent Jones's rapidly declining health prevented thorough communication from taking place, no interview was conducted before he expired. Advanced autopsy determined the following results. The cause of death was a heart attack, presumably triggered by a blocked artery. In the brain, abnormally high levels of dopamine and serotonin were found. Several unidentified substances were found both on Agent Jones's skin and in his bloodstream, despite the fact that no leakages were present in his scuba suit or oxygen tank following extraction. Agent Jones's body was marked as biologically hazardous and incinerated following autopsy completion. Interview Log 2A Discussion of Hull Breach Forward On March 10, 2021, four days after the death of Agent Jones, a breach in Site 3069's northeastern external hull was detected. After the wing security and pressure detection system automatically sealed off the affected section, a repair excursion was made into the area in question after it had fully filled with water. On-site response team C-4, equipped with standard protective scuba and repair equipment, was tasked with investigating the breach. Due to the low severity level of this assignment, Audio and video recording equipment was not present when the following events occurred. These events are the eyewitness of Team Leader Maxwell Swain, collected in an interview with Site Security Director Mallory Wickerford. Said interview is transcribed below. Begin Log March 10, 2021 16 30 17. Good afternoon. My name is Wickerford, and I'm the Director of Security at Site 3069. We need to ask you a few questions to clarify what you and your crew witnessed earlier today when you repaired a breach in the site's hull. Are you alright with that? Yeah, yeah, of course. We met once before, I thought. We may have, yes. Now, can I start by asking you if you noticed anything abnormal about the water that filled the affected section after the hull breached? No, the water itself wasn't abnormal. Pressure was pretty normal too, even for a malfunction. But that might just be because we gave it time to fill. Right. The four of us didn't notice at first, but it didn't look like a person just due to the shape. But when we noticed, Garcia recognized her immediately and started panicking. And this is the subject Garcia claims physically resembles Teresa Lockwood, a task force agent who was declared missing in action four days ago. He claims it because it's her. I hate to phrase it so blunt, but I recognized her face too just from seeing her in the hallways around here. She's pretty distinctive looking, I guess is what did it. I always recognized her in the hallways at work, so I immediately remembered whose face I was looking at on this thing. Can you elaborate on the state of what this thing was? Are you saying this was her body and she was deceased? Well, it was her, I think, but her body must have gotten torn up when it got sucked into the hole breach hole, just because of the pressure difference. She was still wearing remains of a scuba suit. I could see it around her waist and chest, but it was all torn up. Can you confirm that she appeared fully deceased? Would your team theoretically be capable of retrieving the body? How would she not be dead after that? I understand your reasoning, but there may have been anomalous materials or entities affecting her in unknown ways 
following her disappearance within SCP-3069. Ideally, we would want to do a full autopsy on her body to determine what occurred on board the device. The device? I haven't heard it described that way before. Do you guys think this thing was a function still? Can you clarify on what you mean by still? I mean, clearly it used to serve some purpose, but it's abandoned and defunct now. That's what we found in that exploration, right? The one where they lost Teresa? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to discuss any details along those lines. What? Hang on. Is there something that makes you think it's still active and used by… That's all I can say on the topic, my apologies. Now would you mind confirming once more that you are certain Teresa's body was fully dead? I guess I couldn't say then, given what you think about whatever happened on board. I mean, yeah, she looked dead. Noted. Could your team retrieve the body? We're still not clear on what happened to the body when the breach was repaired and the water expellent from the area. I'm not sure. Her body was quite a few feet from us, and the water was murky enough that if she drifted any further back, she'd have been out of sight. I don't quite envision what you're describing, I'm afraid. Are you saying that the water was too dark for you to see where the body went when it drifted off in the direction opposite from you? Yeah, exactly. The headlamp beams just couldn't go that far through the water, and when we repaired the breach, well, I'll be honest, we're not used to seeing that sort of thing, so we were a little on edge and in a hurry to get out of there. We did our job, and when we didn't see her body drift back towards us, we left as per standard procedure. Understandable. Alright. But why is her body not within that particular section of the wing now that the hull has been restored and the section reopened? I, I couldn't say, honestly, there's… Was there anything visibly unusual about the body? That's what I was about to point out, but it was such a quick glimpse that I feel like I can't confirm what I saw. Understood, but please describe it for later analysis anyways. Alright, you know that device the site is built around? The stick stuck in the mud? It's in the middle observation area right around access point 3? That device is SCP-3069-A, yes, I'm familiar with it. You know that light it emits? That almost blue shade of dark green? Yes. I saw that color. That color light in a string. I'm having trouble describing this because I only noticed it for a second. It was really faint, only visible for a short time, before a body drifted out of sight. You saw a device similar to SCP-3069-A, you mean? No, not a full-on device like that thing, just the same color. I know this sounds uncertain. But you know what I'm talking about. It's a very weird color, almost dark, like too dark to be light waves, not bright enough, and hurts your eyes like an ultraviolet bulb does. You know what I mean. You've seen 3069A admit it. Everyone talks about how weird it is. It was definitely that color. No one could miss it. Yes, I'm familiar with its oddity. How was this light present? It was coming out of her, in little strings. I don't know how to word it. I only saw it for a second and it was… it felt weird to look at it. Like I was looking at something that wasn't supposed to be there. Like a mirage. There were these… these little strings of light coming out of her mouth and out between her legs and sort of coiled around her leg where the suit was torn. Out of her mouth and… like a few thick strings of just that color light. Like there were thin cables, but they were glowing that same color. It was… Ugh, it was awful to look at. I'm having trouble wording it. Take your time. You don't need to be uncomfortable. I'm fine, it's just… I don't know how to describe it other than it looking like someone had taken a bunch of five or six cords and just threaded them through her body, and one in and out the other. Like just straight through her. Like a pig on a spit. Noted. And that other glowing thing, the device we built the site around? It's clearly made of the same stuff, and we already know what that thing is what causes Access Point 3's boundary in the first place. It's the… it's the transporter thing. You know what I'm saying? I can't find my words because this is making me nervous. It's understandable, but try to keep your focus. It seems from your witness account that you believe Teresa Lockwood's body isn't present in the area in which it was previously present, not because the water drained and it went out with it but because the material with the same extra-dimensional capabilities as SCP-3069-A was present on the body? 
and that activated and removed her body. Alright, alright. I can see the reasoning in that, given what SCP-3069-A does, so we'll document it and keep an eye out for any future occurrences. Do you have any further concerns about this subject or events on which to elaborate? Yeah. Alright, go ahead. The strings. I only saw them when I looked at her. In the face, like, trying to find her eyes on her face, which were stuck open. And once I looked at her, that was when I noticed the strings. Only once I looked at her eyes, and then she was gone. Go on. It just makes me nervous. Look, we all know what happened to Jones. Word gets out. Him. And might still be watching. You think it wasn't a coincidence that our body disappeared right after you looked directly at it? Understood. It's that, but it's the similarity to 3069A that worries me. I might just be paranoid. What is that, then? Look, if something is watching that 3069A material, that stuff that has that distinctive color and effects, I'm worried that means they're watching the site, too. This meaning? That if they can use that stuff to whisk off a human body when the time is right, they might also be able to whisk off the entire site when the time is right. Access Point 3 has been determined a stable, if anomalous, point in space, and shows no sign of growing, shrinking, or failing. Maybe because they're watching you measure it. I see. Your opinion on the matter is noted, and I will pass your security concerns to my supervisors if you wish. Oh god, I… like I said, maybe I'm just paranoid, but I don't know. Yeah, pass it on. Keep my name attached, too. Will do. Is there anything else you wish to clarify? I guess not. Thank you for your time, and please let me know what your supervisors say if you can. I will make sure to relay to you anything within your clearance level. Alright, fair enough. Thanks. Thank you. Afterward, Swain's concerns were relayed from Site Security Director Mallory Wickerford to the Site Director, as well as their immediate associates and the head of the Research and Development Department. Ultimately, Due to the lack of video evidence of the events described and the cloudy, low-light environment of the place of occurrence, these claims were dismissed and Mr. Swain informed of the decision. Due to the fact that Teresa Lockwood's body was seen in a closed area, but not later found, it is considered a possibility that she has not died nor left SCP-3069, and that a purported presence in Site-3069 was a shared hallucination of anomalous nature by Swain and the other personnel witnessing. In regards to this, Teresa Lockwood has been refiled in personnel records from missing in action to uncertain. SCP-3069 continually leaks a variety of foreign substances, as well as some unknown lifeforms, into surrounding Atlantic seawater. Most substances are sulfur-based, and are often mistaken for naturally occurring excretions from undersea hypothermal vents. Lifeforms released by SCP-3069 are similar in appearance to marine life from the demersal and benthic zones, but are typically not recognized as any species currently present on Earth beyond some visual similarities. The presence of these materials is estimated to signify the beginning of SCP-3069's activation. An ANOVA Exonera event is estimated to occur by the year 2024, which will in turn cause the start of a planet-wide EK-class evolutionary restructuring scenario. Research into the frequency at which biological and chemical matter leaks from SCP-3069 into surrounding seawater has shown that this event is unavoidable, and has likely already begun to progress towards activation significantly. It is estimated that the full release of foreign specimens from SCP-3069 into seawater was intended to occur at approximately 1940-1950, but was delayed by unknown errors on board the structure which culminated with the results of the seismic shift that displaced SCP-3069 and in turn severed TAP-14. However, as exploratory efforts have been greatly reduced due to severe loss of personnel, this cannot be confirmed. Further research into the origin of SCP-3069, as well as the materials it releases, is ongoing. Warning: Access to the following section of this document is restricted to O5 Council members and the Site Directors of Site-42 and Site-3069. If you hold sufficient clearance, proceed below. Eyes Only Addenda This section should not be printed, transcribed, or otherwise textually copied from the electronic version of this document. 
This section should not be intentionally memorized for later recollection or recitation. Addendum 1 Extended Description SCP-3069 is the designation for a massive physical construct extending approximately 6,000 kilometers across the North Atlantic Ocean. At the time of this writing, SCP-3069 continually releases specimens and substances of unknown origin, the purposes of which appear to be environmental disruption, which will culminate with the implementation of accelerated artificial evolutionary advancement of most, if not all, of Earth's species. Hundreds of new species will be released from SCP-3069, evidenced by exploration of several access points and pre-release materials of a similar nature. Due to the toxicity towards humans and the anomalous growth rate of specimens released by SCP-3069, it is estimated that SCP-3069 will successfully cause an evolutionary overhaul, culminating with the extinction of at least 90-95% of humanity within several centuries. This, and the physical release of the initializing materials, is referenced to an Innova Exonera event. For continuation, refer to main document. Addendum 2 Research Results Date March 13, 2021 Location Site 3069 Research conducted by, if applicable, Lead Researcher Maggie Jarman Documented by Lead Researcher Maggie Jarman Summary Images recovered from Exploration 1A and Access Point 1 were provided. Linguistic analysis of the unknown language present on the signs in the images were conducted over a 48-hour period. Comparisons were made with most, if not all, known hieroglyphics, due to the similarity in the appearance of the foreign transcriptions. Analysis of results Close connections were found with both Egyptian and Mi'kmaq hieroglyphic writings. By cross-referencing Egyptian texts, Mi'kmaq texts, and SCP-3069 text, as well as analyzing the context and setting in which the SCP-3069 text was found, a rough translation was made for both signs. On the first sign, the following figures were interpreted in the following order. A figure meaning safe, secure, solid. A figure meaning zone, place, area. A horizontal line. A figure meaning threat, danger, and a figure meaning wind, force, stream. On the second sign, the following figures were interpreted in the following order. A figure meaning carry, transport, bring. A figure meaning produce, grow, form. A figure meaning zone, place, area. A figure meaning again. A figure meaning build, building, construct. A figure meaning earth dirt, nature, and a figure meaning spirit, soul, life. The former sign was found near the entrance of Access Point 1, and the other was found near the tunnel in which Agent Teresa Lockwood first went missing in action. Date: April 5, 2021 Location: Site 3069 Research conducted by, if applicable, Assistant Researcher James Dillon Documented by Lead Researcher Maggie Jarman Summary An attempt to directly approach and physically contact SCP-3069-A was made, using one Class D personnel equipped with standard scuba equipment. D-9182 was instructed to directly touch the sphere of SCP-3069-A. After doing so, their camera revealed that the device's sphere was severely and rapidly degrading the palm of the scuba suit's glove. D-9182 expressed concern over the radio, but decided that they were not able to remove their hand by means of any simple muscle movement. After approximately 15 seconds, SCP-3069-A sphere caused the glove to deteriorate to a point at which the pressure seal broke and water flowed into the suit. D-9182 expressed distress and vocalized being in pain, but soon expired due to internal bleeding caused by pressure differentiation. Analysis of Results It is possible that SCP-3069-A sphere simply holds a high temperature at all times, and this is why the suit failed. However, it is notable that D-9182 expressed that something was preventing them from removing their hand from the sphere. 
the possibility that Maxwell Swain of on-site response team C-4 was correct in hypothesizing that sapient entities of the same type encountered in Exploration Log 1A are continually observing both SCP-3069-A and material similar to it should not be ruled out. Date: April 23, 2021. Location: Site 3069. Research conducted by, if applicable, acting site director. Documented by Head Researcher Marty Walkins. Summary: D-4927 was exposed to an unknown entity expelled from Access Point 3, appearing to belong to the class Hydrozoa. In a controlled on-site underwater environment, D-4927 was equipped with a breathing tube, oxygen mask, and goggles, and suspended unclothed in a two-meter deep saltwater container. The unknown specimen which was phosphorescent with tendrils and approximately a half meter in length, slowly attached itself to his body and proceeded to until such a point at which he was unwilling to respond to his name and designation or any relevant conversation prompts. Instead, only taking his mask off, making continual eye contact with researchers through the glass, and repeating a phrase in an unknown language until he drowned. Analysis of Results Unknown Implications Further human testing research denied by Site Director. Pending override approval. Date: May 9, 2021. Location: Site 3069. Research conducted by, if applicable, Junior Researcher Marion Waters. Documented by Agent E. Jones. Summary: An unmanned exploration was made in Access Point 2 using a miniature drone equipped with underwater camera. The excursion lasted a total of 45 minutes, and the drone was safely returned to the DSRV upon completion. Access Point 2's organic blockage was cleared by means of 31 minutes of power drilling. Following this, a massive release of both animate and deceased lifeforms flooded out of the orifice, swarming the drone. The drone recovered, but suffered minor damage to its back right rotor, and returned to the DSRV for repairs. Following its re-release, it began the excursion to Access Point 2 by progressing into a tunnel which progressively shrunk in diameter. After several dozen meters, the tunnel diameter appeared too small for the drone to pass through, but a secondary path to the left was detected. The drone proceeded down it, and through seven other tunnels of varying length and diameter, until it emerged nine minutes later in a massive chamber lined with what appeared to be hundreds of transparent glass containers, each with some sort of powered off-display screen adjacent it. The drone ascended and approached one of the containers, but an unknown entity knocked into it, disrupting the recording equipment. When recording equipment reactivated 90 seconds later, the drone was on dry ground, pointing upward at a dimly lit small room. A humanoid figure was seen pacing the room, which approached the drone, looked directly at its lens, and threw it back into the water. After four minutes of murky water and slightly distorted footage, the drone was seen returning to the tunnels from which it originally came. Ten minutes later, it emerged with only minor damage, and returned to the DSRV for footage retrieval. Analysis of Results the presence of a Foundation employee in a state such as that being on board SCP-3069 is disconcerting, and even further so considering that there exist apparently one or more areas on board SCP-3069 that are not submerged in water, and evidently hold air capable of supporting human life. While it would be useful to get an air sample, there is no way of telling from the footage we have how the drone arrived in that area and what paths it took to do so. Therefore, it is near impossible to reach the same area again unless by chance or by means of SCP-3069's apparent extra-dimensional layout affecting drone travel. The presence of hundreds of what appears to be containment units within SCP-3069 would explain the source, assuming the source is singular, of the specimens it releases and is worthy of further investigation, potentially in the form of a manned exploration. Date: June 25th. 2022. Location: Site 42. Research conducted by, if applicable, not available. Documented by, not available. Summary: Several personnel were sent 45 kilometers offshore to dispatch a large research DSRV, which descended to a depth of 800 meters for a period of six days. Over this time. 
the vessel collected multiple specimens, including several species of plankton and one cephalopod. These specimens were returned to Site-42 for research, with another offshore retrieval excursion planned for the following week. All species collected, a total of fifteen, were previously unheard of, and did not match any existing documentation. The cephalopod appeared to be an oversized Sepiotuthis lessonlana, notably not native to the North Atlantic, though purple in coloration and possessing nineteen arms. The cephalopod's excretions were found in both human and animal testing to be severely toxic, leading to blistering of the skin and the onset of seizures within approximately ten minutes. While animal subjects survived with apparent neurological damage, the two human subjects expired due to cardiac arrest 30 to 45 minutes after initial exposure. Analysis of Results While it is considered unlikely that any sort of radiological or chemical waste spill occurred in that range within the past 3 to 30 years, arguably the only feasible reason for severe genetic mutations in marine life, another excursion to a separate area is scheduled for additional research. Date. July 1, 2022 Location, Site-42 Research conducted by if applicable, not available. Documented by, not available. Summary: Several personnel were sent 70 kilometers offshore to dispatch a large research DSRV, which descended to a depth of 800 meters for a period of eight days. Over this time, the vessel collected multiple specimens, including several species of plankton, two cephalopods, and an unknown entity appearing similar to those found in Polypolydoza. These specimens were returned to Site-42 for research. All species collected, a total of 18, were previously unheard of and did not match any existing documentation. Similar to in previous tests, the cephalopods' excretions were found in both human and animal tests to be severely toxic, leading to blistering of the skin, the onset of seizures, and full cardiac arrest within approximately 10 minutes. The creature seemingly belonging to Polypodioza was animate, and after approval from lead researchers, was allowed to exit its tank. For thirteen minutes, it rolled itself across the floor at a slow speed, seemingly unaffected by the change of environment from water to air. However, despite its slow speed and lack of notable behavior or sentience, it rolled into the leg of one researcher and left a large blister on her ankle. The specimen was then returned to its tank, and later terminated for extraction and analysis of toxins. These toxins were found to be sulfur-based and chemically similar to those found in the cephalopods. Analysis of Results The severe mutations found in marine life can, at this point, feasibly be sourced from SCP-3069. Further excursions are pending approval, but deemed unsafe at this time. Date Not Available Location Site-42 Research conducted by if applicable, not available. Documented by 056. Summary: Following the events of 2021 and 2022, it was determined relevant to allow Site-42 personnel to make additional excursions to the nearby beach to take shore-level water samples. However, the two personnel sent did not respond to their radio calls or return whatsoever, and have been flagged as missing in action. Analysis of Results This is a dangerous topic to research, and I and some others don't find it a coincidence that one of the personnel missing is extremely visually similar to the individual seen in drone footage from 2021, and wearing the same uniform at that. The Site-3069 research personnel insist that the extent of this thing's anomalous effects go no further than its size, framework, origin, and extra-dimensional capabilities. But I don't see how a minor temporal effect would be all that absurd to suggest, given those parameters. For a machine of that scale, a temporal anomaly pattern may very well show up as nothing other than a metaphysical glitch. You can't have a device that alters and, for lack of better phrasing, outright denies our laws of physics to such an extreme degree without having a few flukes. The truth is, this thing isn't here to watch us. It's been here too long for a generic purpose like that. It's here because someone, something, somewhere, made the decision to interfere with the way this planet's biology functions, and in their eyes, whatever they're doing is long overdue, so they decided to accelerate it. If further research into specimens release is needed, I personally do not advise it, nor do I advise any further direct interactions with SCP-3069. 
I understand that research must be conducted when clarification needed, but there is nothing further to clarify at this point. 056 20